Okay, hello everybody and welcome to this video. And uh, This is Anna Laura Brown of AnnaLauraBrown.com and in this video I'm going to talk with you, as you can tell from the title, about autism diets. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So, you know, there are a lot of myths out there about autism diets. There are a lot of facts out there. There is actually quite a bit of research that has been done out there about autism diets. There are also a lot of books that have been written about autism diets. And so, you know, I am going to attempt through this video to explain to you all about autism diets, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and attempt to, you know, eliminate some of the clutter and confusion that may be out there surrounding autism diets. So to start with a little bit of background on me, in case you aren't already familiar with my story, I was diagnosed as being on the autism spectrum when I was five years old. And this is back in the 1980s when there weren't, you know, as many people or as many kids being diagnosed. And at that time, my parents actually took me to a doctor who was pretty cutting edge and was a naturopathic doctor. And he actually put me on the gluten-free and casein-free diet at about six years old. And so my parents put me on that diet and they made me do it. And I did it 100% for probably about four or five years, and then when I got older, I kind of fell off the wagon a little bit, and now as an adult, I definitely am gluten-free, and I really should at least be dairy-free. I, you know, sometimes slip off the wagon a little bit and then wish I hadn't, but anyhow, so as a child, I did that diet, and I, you know, yes, it was hard, but, you know, my parents made me do it, and I was kind of a picky eater and had sensory issues and everything else, but my parents found a way to make me do it and to make me stick to it for several years, and I know for sure that it definitely helped me with a lot of things, helped me with my behavior, with my focus and concentration, helped me to have less stimming. Um, a lot of people know what the stimming is with the autism, but, you know, for me, a lot of the stimming was, I felt like my hands felt like sandpaper, and so I would do a lot of licking of my hands and, you know, flapping around like sign language, but it wasn't, you know, things like that. And I did a lot less of it once I started on that diet. It actually also significantly helped my gut and my digestive issues and other things. And so, you know, I have to say when parents complain about, oh, my child's just too picky eater, my child can never do that, well, I did it. And I, as a child, I was on that diet, and I know a lot of other kids on the spectrum who have been on it. And so I firmly believe that part of the problem is that is the parent, and the parent doesn't want to do what it takes to put the child on it, and doesn't want to have to deal with some of the child's meltdowns and things like that. I remember having meltdowns around food and sensory issues and other things like that. In one particular case, I can remember we had just had like some kind of, I want to say it was like spaghetti for dinner or something, but I'm sure I probably didn't actually eat the spaghetti, but I must have eaten something else of some kind. But anyhow, some kind of spaghetti or something that was kind of messy. I think it was spaghetti, I don't know, it might have been something else, but it created dishes that were really messy and had, you know, like a lot of stuff on the plates, and my mom was trying to have me do the chore of doing dishes, and I had a complete total meltdown and didn't want to do it, and I cried and screamed and cried and screamed, and I was probably about, I don't know, eight, nine, ten or so at this point, and my mom literally made me sleep on the floor in the kitchen all night long because I refused to do the dishes, and you know, that might sound a little bit strict or a little bit, you know, mean to some degree, but the reality is that then in the morning I finally got up and I actually did eventually do some of those dishes. You know, I had just had a massive meltdown that sometimes as a parent you have to put your foot down and your yes, your child may do things that you don't agree with and it may be hard, but you just have to do it. So anyhow, back to the whole autism diets discussion. So what's good about autism diets? Personally, I have uh, read too many experiences as well as some of the research that's out there and I actually have a whole research document on computer, my computer about the pros and cons of different autism diets that if you actually want to see that um, you can message me and I can get it for you. Um, I don't post it publicly online because it there are some issues regarding copyright and things and the person who sent it to me doesn't want it posted publicly but it's uh, pretty good research out of the University of Arizona that's got some really good stuff on it. So anyhow, I personally believe that the good is that autism diets really can 
help a lot of kids. And that doesn't necessarily mean that everything's going to be perfect all the time, that your kid won't have meltdowns, or that your child might not necessarily also need some additional support, whether that's through essential oils and natural means, or whether that is maybe through some kind of a medication. And the other good about it is that there are a lot of books out there that are written about autism diets, and I have several ebooks that I've downloaded on my Kindle here on it. So, for example, this is actually one of the more popular ones, and I'm going to try to see if I can find a picture of the cover of it on the Kindle. Sometimes that's a little bit challenging here. Let me pull it up, but here we go. So, the Autism and ADHD Diet. A step-by-step -step guide to hope and healing by living gluten-free and casein-free by Bari Soberberg. So that's a one really good one, and has really good stuff. And there's actually also an accompanying cookbook that goes with it, and some other things. And let me go back and see if I can find some others. But anyhow, there are just a lot of variety. If you go to Amazon or even to your local library and search, you will find a lot of books that will give you recipes and hints and tips, specifically how to do it. I actually also have an ebook myself on healthy eating for autism, and I'll go ahead and type the URL in here, right here, so that you can uh, try to find it. I believe that's exactly what the URL is right there. So you can go and locate it yourself. Um, that I wrote that has some specific steps and instructions on how to implement healthy eating for a child on the autism spectrum. And yeah, so there just are a lot of things out there and resources that can help you if this is something that you really, really want to make happen. Okay, so the bad is that, you know, not every diet that is supposedly supposed to work for kids with autism is necessarily going to work for every person. And there are a lot of different options out there. Like I said, gluten-free, casein-free is the most common. Um, this day and age, keto is becoming really popular. Personally, I think there are some real pros and cons to keto. I'm not necessarily a big keto fan, especially for adults. Uh, you know, I believe that's something you'd have to research for kids. There's also the body ecology diet, which can work really well um, for some people. So, you know, you just have to kind of research your options and know your options. So, you know, the bad is that, like I said, it can be confusing and it can be difficult and hard at times to implement with a child. You know, just because you decide you want to do it and that the benefits are there for the child doesn't mean it's going to always be an easy road. Okay, and then the ugly is that there's also a lot of myths out there from people claiming that there's no research on the diet, so that they researched it, just the small group, and they somehow didn't work, or because it wasn't some magic cure for the child then that means that you shouldn't even try it. So, you know, the gist of it of this, what I want to say is that if you really feel like your child could benefit from it, and I feel like almost all children on the spectrum could benefit from it, that you really should at least make an attempt to try it and, you know, do your homework, get do the research, get well prepared, get some support, and, you know, just go for it. You have everything to gain and nothing to lose. So anyhow, if you would like some additional support, I'm going to post a link right here where I offer a free consultation, and you can go there and we can chat about how it is that I could potentially, as a certified health coach, help you to implement a um, special autism diet with your child if that's something that you decide you want to do. Or maybe we can just have a conversation about your child and I can help you figure out if that's maybe something that you want to do or maybe it isn't. So anyhow, Take care. Thanks for watching. I look forward to hearing from you and have a good rest of your day.